Hi, everyone. My name is Martin Lebeski. I'm an investment director at Flashpoint. Uh, and uh, I will be uh, sort of the moderator for this uh, uh, session, which is the vertical SaaS uh, session, uh, pitching session of uh, Summer SaaS. In the meantime, in the parallel, there is uh, the opening uh, remarks of the event. So it's, uh, you know, uh, I'll do the opening for us. Uh, the Summer SaaS is basically an online event uh, that we organized for uh, the fourth uh, year already. Um, and this event uh, aims to bring together uh, a lot of the tech leaders and uh, startups and investors, uh, basically uh, from across uh, Europe, US and Israel. Um, we decided to do this event because there was no event uh, during the summer. I mean, all conference organizers just focus on sort of autumn and spring. And so we thought that it was like a good um, occasion to actually organize an event. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm based out of Budapest. Uh, Flashpoint actually has, uh, I think, like seven offices across uh, Europe uh, and the headquarters in London. Uh, and, uh, you know, we do mostly B2B SaaS uh, investments with a special focus on uh, sort of uh, emerging Europe well, uh, as, as sort of where the founders are from. Um, I would like to take uh, uh, this occasion and actually ask the jury to, uh, uh, to introduce themselves. We have uh, very uh, great jury members, so I would like to ask them to go uh, one by one, maybe starting with Andreas, if Andreas uh, is here. Hello, uh, very nice to meet all of you and the partner at Atomico uh, looking into vertical SaaS uh, as one of the areas that I really like. Um, investors in amongst other things, but in terms of vertical SaaS in Digital, which is a Romanian born uh, software for vet clinics, veterinarians. So really exciting stuff, great to be here. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, um, Eyal. Hi, everybody. I'm Eyal. I'm a partner at Berengia. We're a UK and US based VC fund. Uh, and I looked at of our tech year investment. Uh, I particularly have a bunch of for vertical SaaS plays. All right. Thank you. Um, Magda. I don't think we have Magda here. Magda, you're muted. She's uh, here, but she's muted. Ah, uh, she's here. Just muted. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I, I was actually not muted, which is weird. But uh, anyhow, I'm Magda. I'm from Bulgarian. Uh, we're multi-station investors. Um, spend a lot of my time on, on, on SaaS, including vertical SaaS. Nice to meet you around. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and then Nadia. Okay. I don't think we have Nadia. Anyway, so um, yeah, so then I think that's uh, that's it for the jury. Um, and uh, I would like to invite the first startup to pitch, uh, which is End Their Touring. Uh, and Olena, the stage is yours. Uh, can you please share your screen and then show the presentation? Hello, everybody. I'm sharing my screen. Um, just to be sure, I will make the full screen and after that share the presentation. You see now the, the title slide, right? Yes. Okay, great. So, hi, everybody. I'm really happy to be here. I'm Olena CEO and co-founder at Ender Turin. We create a mail-based, real-time human conversation augmentation for call centers to double the revenue. Current, our customers are mainly from financial industry, but we start healthcare, too. So, what is the problem here? Enterprises lose revenue in human conversation black box. When we have this voice communication, nobody really tackles the complete set of content of the communication. 800 million conversations recorded daily over Europe, and just up to 5% of those conversations manually reviewed for quality control and, and other purposes. So companies have compliance risk, low sales to service ratio, and bulk training and coaching, which is not efficient. And the Turing uncovers 100% of conversation potential. How we do this? We grab chats, calls, and emails and process all of it. Now we process 100% conversations for seven medium enterprise customers with 775 call center agents. And we have five stars at G2. Post call processing, we get interest, objections, consent, complaints, and 40 more control points in 24 different languages. All our ML models are created inside. We improve revenue, customer satisfaction, debt recovery for financial institutions and compliance. In real-time conversation augmentation, which is our beta, 
we now do for one of our customers and proceed with this product for the market. It's real-time augmentation of a specialist in a call center to provide better customer service and close more deals. How it works, we capture all the conversation, we analyze it with natural language processing ML model, we assess the performance of every employee, we coach them on the fly on the platform with automatic feedback, and then the company measures the result. We already have proven results with seven companies. One is reject, projected here in revenue referrals and overhead cut of time. And delivering end-to-end -end results with medium enterprises, we're at the moment the best fit for their needs. Uh, we have competitors as variant in Europe and Crest stays in the US. And what is our USP? Inbuilt feature for financial industry. That's high quality proper uh, proprietary speech to text for 24 languages. We do not um, link to Amazon, Google, or other engines, and we excellent in time to value. Our ideal customer has more than 25 agents in their call center, and usually it's annual contracts, but some pay also monthly. We are break even in December this year. We had a problem with Ukrainian war started, and we churned intentionally 19K of our MRR, and by at this moment, we are 20 car again in MRR and growing. Uh, we had two rounds before, and currently we are going for our seed round for 1.75 million. And we are entering eight countries at the same time, and now heading to the US too. We're three founders, 10 people complete team, all have their relevant uh, experience. And our CTO had previous business and exited it. It's also related to the same area. And according to the Gartner, which is the, this is the proper moment. By 2025, 40% of all call centers will use speech-to-text technology to process conversation. And the market is highly growing. Thank you very much. I feel the echo. So come with us and be a part of our journey in video enterprise call center from cost to profit. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alana. You were right on time. So hopefully uh, we fixed uh, basically all the issues. I managed to, in the meantime, fix mine. So that's uh, that's great. Um, so now it's the time for the question uh, questions from the jury. Um, uh, I have you. a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Or, and you wanna... Okay. No. Th thanks. Thanks for a great picture, Alana. Um, I, I would be curious to hear. I mean, there is um, with all, all the data that is that is collected and. Um, there is also a little bit of like uh, information overload. How do you help the quality assurance managers to steer them uh, into the, the, the right metrics to look at to, mm -hmm. to improve the quality? Um, a lot of things inside are automated. So we do automated mm -hmm. scoring. We do uh, partially like robotic process automation. Our system triggers with, within other systems as well, some more processes mm -hmm. like escalations, tickets check-in and others. So. Generally, we replace at 70 to 80 percent the quality manager in the contact center. Got it. And, and are they because there might, there might be different objectives depending on who you are. Uh, if you're like, you know, big enterprise, you just have lots of calls. I guess you want to minimize the time spent and, 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 and the outcome versus some might be very, very focused on the outcome. Uh, do you, like, is there flexibility in, in the software for? Mm -hmm. uh, generally, our customers see four uh, value points in our solution. It's mm -hmm. not only the quality management automation and some uh, specific KPIs for call center. Uh, the biggest value they find in customer behavior research for product teams, for marketing. And uh, we do this analytics for them automatically on our dashboards. The a part of the quality management, which is the second pillar, we have agent training and coaching on the same platform. So it actually improves the performance of every employee. Like there is a big gap between the top performing and the rest of the team. And we close this gap with automated feedback and coaching. And uh, another one is uh, the automation. So the system can, from the real time uh, analysis of the conversation, trigger different parts of the business processes for the company. But it requires uh, deep integrations. Super, thank you. Lena, thank oh. you for, for the presentation. And uh, my question would be, um, what's your take on sort of like 
or more all-in-one, more sweet kind of solutions versus you being focused like on speech to text. So I'm, I'm curious on like an out of the box send desk, uh, Dixa customer, etc. If they would be adding a little bit more features, maybe they would be getting to like a at least to a certain percent of what you could be doing. So I'm I'm curious on your take on why this is a standalone next to the suite. Mm -hmm. um, that's a Super great question, Andreas, because there are a lot of uh, call center solutions or let's say ticket solutions that apply such features inside. First of all, for them, it's uh, a feature set and they are not focused. It's like not, not the main business um, for the analysis, for the quality management and other parts. We are more sophisticated in this. So there are customers that are kind of OK with what they have in the current solution. And there are customers or a, a little bit higher process maturity that need more sophisticated tools. And in this case, we integrate with Genesis, we integrate with Zendesk and others to apply this. And we believe that this is actually our potential exit in five to seven years, or maybe a little bit faster, uh, specifically for such tools that need us as an additional uh, suit, feature suit. Sounds great, thanks. All right, perfect, thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much, Elena. And uh, the next uh, presenter um, is Oleg uh, from Carbon Space. So Oleg, you have four minutes. I forgot to tell that everyone uh, actually has four minutes. I'll start the timer now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Um, OK, let me just uh, share my screen. Uh, can you see it? Yes. And it should be full screen now, right? Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, so, hey, hello, I'm Oleg Demidov. I'm the Chief Innovation, Innovation Officer and the co-founder of Carbon Space. Uh, Carbon Space is the satellite and air-powered platform uh, helping food producers to track carbon footprint and reach their climate goals in their supply chains. So, food supply chains accounts for almost a quarter of total greenhouse gas emissions. But at the same time, they possess uh, almost a half of carbon emission reduction potential by 2050. And this important and uh, growing market uh, has uh, several driving factors. Uh, the first one is regulation. So you can think about the European deforestation, deforestation law, uh, European carbon law that are common. Uh, and of course, there are a lot of ESG considerations from the food, uh, food producers because that's more and more important for them uh, by, like to, to raise capital and to keep their reputation. And finally, it's a lot about consumer demanding more sustainable products. And uh, this all leads to a quite significant market opportunity. And among this uh, large market, we are targeting on the most dynamic part, uh, which are the pork supply and uh, palm oil supply chains in US, Brazil, and Southwest Asia. And we are targeting large uh, food corporates like Nestle and PepsiCo of this world. Our major buyers uh, in these corporations are first uh, sustainability departments uh, that need to reach uh, their climate goals and need to generate carbon claims. And the second and even more important buyer is the procurement department uh, that use our data to select more sustainable suppliers and also to build more fair incentive systems for their suppliers. Uh, our business model is the annual subscription per hectare uh, of monitored land. Uh, we are targeting enterprise segment with check sizes above uh, 50,000 euro per year. Our sales cycle is three to six months, and usually it starts with the basic uh, trials. Um, so we uh, went from 20K uh, to 300K ARR last year. And this year, we are aiming to be close to 1 million ARR by the end of the year. Uh, this industry is very sensitive to different verification and certification uh, options. Uh, our approach is completely peer-reviewed, uh, science-based. And we are currently completing the ISO certification and going through the process with a number of voluntary standards. Our key advantage is our unique technology core where we combine satellite data with the ground data from Flaston stations. Uh, it's a network of stations, uh, hundreds of stations globally, that provide uh, the most uh, powerful ground roofing data set. 
and we're the best company to work with this uh, ground truth and data set uh, to generate models uh, that are globally scalable and can provide data to any area above one hectare uh, anywhere in the world. And uh, there is a quite dynamic competitive landscape. Uh, so our major advantages is that we provide the primary data. We don't use any proxies or emission factors. We don't need to go on site. That's why we are very scalable. And we can look at very different ecosystems from agriculture to forestry and anything in between. Uh, we have a brilliant uh, team behind the company. Uh, we are like a number of serial entrepreneurs and space scientists. Uh, our CEO has a huge experience with food corporates, uh, working for Nestle, Barikali, Bo Ferrero. And our head of science was the team lead at NASA JPL. Uh, on the fundraising side, we recently closed uh, another million euro. Uh, so now we have uh, over 12 months of runway. But of course, we want to grow faster and we are going to open our next uh, fundraising campaign uh, in the end of next quarter. Uh, so anyway, happy to uh, provide more details about our journey in the meantime. Um, yeah, and uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, happy to answer your questions right now. Thank you, Oleg. The time is actually up. Questions? Oleg, I have a very quick question and maybe a simple one. Uh, it sounds like you're using pretty much data that everybody can use, or so FluxNet and some of the satellites. Uh, so everybody can. So what's the secret sauce if you're using the same open data available to other people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are the best uh, who use FluxNet data. Uh, of course, the science has like like 20, 30 year history. Uh, but if you look at the tech stack of our competitors, they usually just take and the soil samples or they take some trigonometry as the as the baseline and as the ground truth and uh, this data alone yeah doesn't have like enough precision and you don't have a lot of data points but uh, fluxnet data is what's scaling like globally uh, it has more and more stations and you are getting the data on the hourly basis and so uh, like according to the leading scientists in this domain we are at least like one and a half to two years ahead of the competition on this front. Thank you. No, like maybe maybe I missed that, but like for, for better or for worse, like Vera seems to be sort of emerging as sort of like the, the standard or like organization slash company to verify carbon projects. Would you work with them or would you go around them? Would they be a partner or would they be a customer to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're mostly focused on the corporate environment. Uh, okay. In this environment, it's more about insetting claims uh, than carbon credits. Uh, so Vera is not actually yeah, very powerful on this front. It's more about ISO, more about yeah, some different uh, certifications. Uh, we are also going through the process with Vera. Uh, it takes a lot of time. Uh, it's not clear if Vera will be uh, the champion in the end at this market because there is quite a lot of yeah, like poor publicity. Uh, dedicated to carbon credits. Uh, but yeah, we are working with multiple players. Uh, we are like on the MRV side and we can link to multiple standards. That, that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. One question from, from my side, I think it's a super interesting area. Um, I mean, what are the limitations of satellite data? Right? I mean, you have the, the clear pros of that it's super scalable and you, you have access to, 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 to the information. I mean, is there is there anything that whoever is going and taking soil samples um, or other little bit more manual processes that you know, will get that, that you will not get that is valuable? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a good question. And of course, from the scientific standpoint, you can always do better if you add more and more data, if you go on site, if you apply some like LIDARs mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. other sources. But the question is uh, how you can scale like climate actions uh, across food supply chains. And then basically there is a level of accuracy that is good enough. Um, so based on the uh, ground uh, data, we believe that like in most cases, we can be within like 10% uh, accuracy, uh, or 10% like error, I would say. And that's enough for most of the use cases that we see. Uh, and of course, um, like because of this, it's scalable, uh, it can be done by the corporates like Nestle and PepsiCo at scale 
and going from like smaller small pilots to actually scaling through the whole supply chains. All right, perfect. Thank you very much for the questions. And uh, I think now it's time for us to move to the next presenter, which is uh, Queen AI and uh, Gigi, right? Yeah. yeah. Hi, everyone. Just sharing the screen. <clears throat> okay. So, hi, everyone. This is Gusha. I'm the uh, CEO and founder of Queen AI, and today I'll be pitching about our audience engine and its future vision. Um, deep learning applications are gaining momentum with recent uh, proofs around AI uh, and how it makes our life easier. We see applications focused on image recognition, NLPs, and drug discoveries. And in Queen AI, uh, we focus on deep learning applications for user behavior prediction. And we are the first AI system dedicated to e-commerce growth uh, for user behavior prediction. The reason behind us, mainly due to changing industry dynamics around privacy concerns and loss of third party cookies, which leads to ri rising importance around uh, use of first party data. And uh, we see that industry dynamics are changing and getting traffic to e-commerce websites is getting harder and advertising is less targeted and more expensive and savvy customers and more regulations uh, mainly restrict the data availability. That's why we created Queen AI, and Queen is a no-code and to-end automated deep learning platform to manage and predict online visitor behavior in a privacy-safe mode. We are using the deep learning to process website first-party data to spot and predict existing rarities in customer behavior and enable companies to take an action uh, on it, uh, which leads to higher conversion and engagement. Our customers plug Queen and the results are quite amazing, which is tested by leading brands like Kingfisher, Decathlon and Under Armour. And uh, we developed our platform and tested with Kingfisher's group company. And after seeing the results and convert them as a customer, we test the platform in other verticals like uh, electronics, furniture, and apparel. And uh, we then um, closed our first round last year, uh, which was half million pounds and has been mostly spending for the technology, branding, and initial traction. Uh, and our product development effort, efforts uh, will continue for ongoing automation um, in decision making and upsell uh, opportunities while making it more scalable through integrations and generative models. Uh, which here we partner with UCL um, as a university. Uh, we charge our clients with monthly fixed fee based on the data we process, which is the total page view. And we have a tiered pricing um, based on their website traffic. And we let our customers to try our new technology before they decide. And this new category and opportunity will improve the markets between 10 to 30 percentage with the incremental revenue success. And we get around four percentage commission, which leads to 250 to 8 million pounds revenue per year. Queen positions in a unique way by having no system dependency and utilizing privacy safe streaming and algorithms for behavior analytics. It has the fastest time to value with full automation at a fraction of cost. We are building a solid growth engine as we uh, have 40K MRR in free trial stage, which another 50K MRR under evaluation and uh, 150K MRR as a potential interest with our direct sales effort. On top of this initial technology and channel partner interests have started, which is expected to lead the business model going forward. We are a team of innovation specialists together with my sister. We are the founders of Queen AI. I'm responsible from innovative business and Gonja is responsible from the technology with her 20 plus experience in AI. Daniel and Farouk are senior team members and responsible from growth and innovation with their experience in Ogilvy, Bloomreach and eBay. Uh, and we are backed by fantastic advisors. And uh, we are currently raising 1.5 million pounds, mostly to be, to be used for our key hires and technology um, mainly. And thank you for your time. And I'm delighted to get your questions now. Perfect, right on time.
Thank you very much for, for a great presentation. I have a very stupid question maybe, but um, if you basically, so you derive these, these insights and these predictions onto how we use behave on the website, what do companies then do with these insights? What are they using them for and how much do you need to take them by the hand so that they turn these insights into something that creates the business value for them? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, me coming from a consulting background and my founder has been working as like data scientist in different com companies, we see that, you know, end-to-end -end automation and simplicity is the key. So uh, we, the, the product relies on the clickstream first-party data, uh, like it just collects uh, via the Google Tag Management, super easy integration. And then after that, uh, all the things like the algorithm learning and then prediction uh, is is fully automated and AI decides about the behavior labels and after that um, companies can take an action uh, either through the building pop-up in the product or through API with their engagement tools so um, the the action part is quite flexible in in that way got it Quick question, in terms of data, how much more data do you provide versus some of the competitors? Obviously, the best well-known is the Google Analytics platform. I'm talking mm -hmm. about the paid version. Um, and what additional components apart from integration with API to other um, software providers? And also that analytical la uh, layer, which I believe is somebody goes to the website, they, for example, churn on page three, then the artificial intelligence probably asks you, prompts you to, to follow up with them. What else, which is slightly more different um, and difficult to replicate, do you offer? Yeah, sure. The, 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 the main difference is being real time and having all the system run in real time, meaning that all the action trigger is less than 70 milliseconds and decisioning is happening like a human brain, like in 70 milliseconds. So that's, that's where the magic comes. And of course, the, the, the system is end-to-end -end automated, so we can label the behaviors and then trigger the action, which you cannot make with Google or any ML platforms that, that can be used. Uh, so you need kind of an uh, you know, integration hassle around there. And uh, the other important part is like, we can understand very different behaviors. Like on the website, think, think it as the best salesperson, Queen could understand who is real buyer, who is going to abandon the journey, who is more prone to click and collect, who is uh, seeking for an information, who is payment assistant, you know, uh, so we can label very different behaviors and then can trigger the action, which makes the real difference, especially from uh, our direct competitor, uh, BlackRock. All right. Very, maybe from my side, do you, do you use any scraping or not? Because I'm aware of some smaller competitors who actually do in terms of additional API, uh, geographic location, and so on. Uh, no, this is fully privacy safe and relies on clickstream part of the things. Great, thanks. Perfect, uh, Tashu. Thank you very much, Gosa. And, uh, yeah, and that was a Queen AI. <clears throat> so the next one is Swen uh, with Leonardo. Hi. Hi. Do you mind uh, like unsharing your screen, uh, Gulsa? So that. Oh, sure. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so hi, my name is Leonardo, and I'm the co-founder of uh, and CEO of Sven. So over the past two years, I'm working with two other co-founders and the senior team developers on Swen, which is a booking management uh, and property management plan for software for uh, campsites and hotels. So let me tell you uh, our backstory. So running a success successful uh, campsite or hotel is complex as, as is, even more so when you need multiple software solutions for, for instance, booking, reception, administration, sales and channel management, and so on to run it on. So most of those solutions are usually to over 20 years old and completely outdated. Uh, they cost money, but also they cost additional commission for reservations. So those commissions can go up to uh, five to 10,000 euros for smaller campsites and up to 50,000 euros for larger campsites or hotels. 
per year. Uh, so you can imagine uh, working on such uh, fr you can imagine the frustration of working on such systems for both, both reception and uh, guests that need to interact with such systems. Uh, so the magnitude of this problem uh, culminated when one of the largest campsites in Europe offered us 400,000 euros to create a unique solution that would tackle actually those uh, those problems at all at once. So this is basically how our journey started with SWEN. So what is SWEN? Um, SWEN is uh, an all-in-one modern and intuitive operating system for campsites and hotels, uh, which saves money and uh, time and resources by automating processes, and at the same time increasing employer uh, satisfaction and efficiency, also guest uh, satisfaction indirectly. Uh, so, as I mentioned, using multiple systems increases total cost and maintenance for camp and hotel managers. Well, SWEN is a more affordable solution, being an all-in-one solution, but also offering such other benefits, such as uh, upsell potential for uh, by focusing on what really matters, and that it is the guest. So, shorter staff onboarding time and efficient revenue management. Uh, so the core system uh, for booking and reception is already completed and fully functional in the mentioned campsite. With additional six uh, uh, implementations out of total 11 campsites that we closed deals since we started sales in February. We also closed deals for three hotels, uh, which we'll implement in uh, Q3 this year. Our current ARR is around 25,000 uh, euros. Uh, while well, we expect to close the years at around 200,000 euros ARR. Uh, so um, market-wise, there is uh, 800 plus campsites in Croatia, while well, we have around 30,000 campsites in Europe. And as for hotels, we have around 1,000 hotels in Croatia with more than 200,000 in Europe. The average number of camping pitches per camp is around uh, 80 to 100 and hotels have around 150 rooms. So our expected monthly revenue per camp is around 500 euros, uh, while uh, for hotels we expect around 1,000 euros per hotel. Uh, so uh, with a 500k uh, seed investment round, we would complete uh, this phase of the development and expand to the Europe market. Uh, and that this, this would uh, propel us to around 1.2 million RRR uh, by the next year. Uh, so our vision is much more than being just a nicely designed property and booking management software. Our vision is online check-ins, cash of payments, guest behavioral data processing and market. Uh, so for marketing purposes and much more. Uh, Leonardo, your time is unfortunately up. Uh, so um, now is the time for questions. Uh, th thanks for a great pitch. Um, my question is more related to, to go to market. My understanding is many of the campsites and, and hotels that you target are independent, uh, meaning that um, you know you, you have to you have to target them directly uh, and might not be might not necessarily always have the sophistication of like, let's say a hotel chain. How do you how do you get through that hurdle? So the, the go-to-market strategy is quite easy for smaller campsites, being that they are usually uh, working on Excels and really outdated uh, custom tailor-made property management systems, while larger campsites are using kind of uh, hotel management software that is adapted to camp management, which is really not suitable because campsites are usually more complex. And we started with campsites. So we know how campsites work and we have it specialized for campsites. While we have a small adaptation for hotels, uh, being that hotels are easier, easier to manage uh, in terms of booking complexity and, and types of vehicles that are needed, uh, whilst in hotels you have just rooms mostly. Fernando, can you just walk me through how you think about the TAM or, or the SOM actually for campsites? Because I feel like you have a very clear niche there. So 30,000 sites, what does that mean in terms of revenue if you get half the market? Uh, sorry, what, what do you mean? So what, what is our total uh, market? Addressable, yeah, how, how do you think about the addressable market for campsites? So we, 
uh, we think that we can address around uh, 70 billion market size. So being that campsites are usually um, more, I mean, more going into the glamping sites. So more being uh, uh, the sites that go around 800 euros for mobile homes. That is a new segment in camping business. So you have like uh, mobile homes in Croatia that go for 800 euros per night. Uh, so that is a huge revenue stream for us. Okay. Uh, it, it wasn't really my question, but okay, I think we're a bit short on time, but thank you. Okay, sorry. All right. Thank you very much, Leonardo. Um, I think we have uh, the last picture, which is uh, Groundhog and Christopher. Hello there, everyone. Let me share my screen. Everyone can see? Yep, all right. All good. Fantastic. So I'm Chris, uh, co-founder of, of Groundhog. And uh, I want to take you on a journey underground and uh, discuss about protecting our infrastructure that we so much need for communication, electricity, water, and, and heating. Um, did you know that in UK alone, this critical infrastructure is accidentally cut every few minutes? and it costs around six billion a year. And why? Because the underground utilities are either not well mapped or that the diggers don't have the tools to display where in the ground the utilities lie. Our mission is to solve the problem with an easy to use tool, latest te technology. And this is a 10 billion uh, market globally. Groundhawk takes the professional surveyor out of the picture by giving an easy to use tool into the hands of the workers that are already on site. Now it's not anymore the professional surveyor who afterwards travels to the site and guesses where the cables are hidden underground, how deep they are and so on, but it's the workers who transparently 3D scans the trench, takes photo evidence, and meter for meter gets the cables documented in 3D. This ensures quality of the work, uh, reduces traveling and costs, and make the whole building uh, process transparent in real time, which also reduces, shortens the, the project. So, uh, we use some pretty high tech here um, from, for example, uh, positioning being a couple of centimeters of, of accuracy and automating the, the processing of the 3D point clouds uh, uh, with AI. The solution consists of uh, not only a device on, on site, but a cloud uh, service and portal for project management and, and documentation. And, and then we automat automatically encode the, the data uh, specifically for, for each uh, network, uh, network owner's own uh, systems. They use different codes and, and, and stuff. Um, so far, we have had uh, fantastic uh, customer traction. So, we started a little bit more than a year ago with, with the first operational customers. Now we have 15 customers in five countries who are using Groundhog and continue, uh, continuing to increase their usage. We are uh, quadrupling our revenue uh, this year to around 600K. Um, the team has solid background in geospatial. Janne as CEO of Esri in Finland, myself uh, building satellite data service business at the Unicorn ISI, um, Laura uh, running professional services at, at Esri and uh, Arsi building out uh, mapping solutions for, for more than 10, 10 years. Um, we are a vertical hardware enabled software SaaS company. We do sell the hardware with over 50% uh, margin, 
but that's not the main business. The main business is in, in, in the uh, monthly revenue that, that our customers pay 220 euros per device or 2,600 a year. And we are now in process of raising a seed round for go to market in Europe and developing the Groundhog 2.0. 2 Thank you. Time is up, Chris. Thank Chris, you. thank you very, thank you very much. Um, maybe one question. Maybe I just didn't get it properly from uh, from the presentation. But what is your ideal customer profile, and sort of what are what are the kinds of companies that you can be selling to? So we are uh, we are selling to uh, two types of of companies. It's the uh, prime contractors who work for the network operators, or in the case that the network operators themselves, uh, these can be telcos or or electricity or other utilities that they take the prime contracting role, meaning that they, you know, do the planning and project management and, and, and so on. So those are our target customers. Chris, sorry, just again, maybe I didn't understand. What does the hardware do? Is, 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 it, is, it, is it a handheld radar? Is it the camera? Well, what does it do? So it's, it 3D scans uh, the underground, the, the trench, and lidar or radar no it uses the the camera uh it has um G, uh, like gps sensor and, and and stuff and and it, it creates a 3d environment so it's similar to lidar uh but it's not using lidar because lidar is is still fairly expensive so, so what spectrum are you using sorry uh, the, the can you just uh, are you using visible spectrum or using yes, radar because no. visible spectrum doesn't it's tell you what's on the ground sorry uh, visible spectrum, we're, we're using visible spectrum and we are scanning open trenches. So we are not right. beyond uh, under, we are not seeing beyond the uh, like ground surface, but when it's open and that's the whole, whole thing that, that we, we have a tool that can be used uh, by the workers who are already there when it's open. Otherwise you have to guess afterwards and, and that's how it's done mostly today. Okay. Thank you. Roughly, as it's a mix of hardware and software components, roughly what margins? Uh, so, so on, on hardware, the, the margin is, is uh, above uh, fifty percent, and and on the on the software side, uh, seventy to eighty percent. All right, perfect. If there are no more questions to Chris, then uh, I would like to ask the jury to vote. Uh, there is a link uh, in the calendar invite uh, to a site called Mentimeter uh, on menti.com. So if you could use that link and basically vote for the startup that you like the most out of the oh, ones wow. that you presented. And then I will just show that on my screen, uh, like the results page. So I'll... Can you, uh, are, are you able to show, show us some of the companies we saw, just so we can remind us? Uh, yeah, so basically you will have all the names of the companies and you need to, uh, yeah, yeah, so I can remind you like what each of them did. So Ender, uh, Ender uh, Turing was uh, basically the call center KPI, uh, Carbon Space uh, was uh, sort of the remote monitoring, uh, Queen AI was the website uh, e-commerce analytics, Swen was the, uh, the campsite hospitality platform and Groundhog was uh, sort of the underground uh, sort of uh, cable and utility um, intelligence tool. Cool. Okay. So let me know if uh, all of you have voted and then I'll, I'm uh, done. I'll yeah, hopefully up. be able to show the uh, results. Okay, so all of you have voted. Yes? Okay, perfect. So I'll try to uh, uh, share the screen here, but it doesn't allow me. Um, okay, that's weird. Anyway, so I can announce the winner. So the winner of the pitch track is Carbon Space uh, with 50% of the votes. 
So congratulations, Carbon Space. Uh, you will move to the grand uh, final. Congratulations, Thank you very much for participating and trying to spread great pitches. And uh, yes, now we see the results of our helpful. Thank you, everyone. And join us for the other sessions.